So this is uh, Roy Keane's best Manchester United 11. The criteria being players who played for Manchester United in the Premier League. And we came up with this really when chatting at Old Trafford yeah, but on I Thursday. I don't like this. I've told you before, I don't like doing this. I don't like upsetting some of my teammates, I have to say. It's not easy. So the easy thing was not selecting, it was the ones you had to leave out. Yeah, yeah. I had to leave out some brilliant players and brilliant, brilliant characters. Um, but obviously, I've, I've done it. And well, you've been you've been spoiled for choice. Um, Ralph Rangnick seems pretty happy with Manchester United's goalkeeping options moving forward. Let's have a look at the three that we've put before Roy. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to give him a selection of options, and he's going to take one. Um, so David de Gea has had another really good season. Peter Schmeichel, um, sparring partner of yours. <laughs> and Edwin was nearly a sparing partner. If I stayed in another month, he would have <laughs> And he threatened to. What was it? He, he, was he threatened the, the guy, didn't he, on the way home from Tottenham? The, or the game? Yeah, yeah, but that's not really. You've never been a big fan. Before we actually. You've never been a big fan no, of No, no, I think, I think goalkeepers get too much praise. You know, when they make a save. No, I just think keepers get. No, I just. Uh, so what, was you, what did you base just, this on then? On what? Your choice here. Well, well, Peter, I had to go with Peter. Because? Because he was very, very good. Not as good as everyone thought, but he was very, very good. <laughs> and obviously good memories, to, good memories with him. Um, he was a good character in the dressing room. I didn't, listen, me, me and Peter certainly weren't the best of mates, absolutely far from it. But the most important thing I had for Peter and all my teammates was I had huge respect for him. And he produced obviously big moments and... Uh, and obviously he helped us get over the line in some big matches, so that's that's the bottom line, really. Did you feel comfortable with with him behind you? Is yeah. That what it comes down yeah, to? simple as that. Yeah. Well, obviously, before you go into any game, you you look you look over your shoulder, you look who's in goal, and you go, yeah, I'm happy with him. I think we've got a chance, and that's the way I'd look at it. And Peter, Peter would produce and um, and I would see help us get, you know, again get get trophies. What's a good sign, would you say, with goalkeepers? Is it making the the spectacular saves or actually? Just doing being their quite jobs, quiet. really. And be, no, no, be, be, being good characters, be, make important saves. Again, because we, were, we, we had a decent team, Peter wasn't getting called upon a lot. But you knew when he was given that opportunity, he'd produce. So that's very, very simply. <laughs> he made some big saves for us. Um, and again, a good, a good character in the dressing room. He was, very, you know, he was lively and, uh, and, and he produced at the important moments. And who won the scrap? Uh, we'd say it was a draw. <laughs> <laughs> We're to a split decision. This is the one that Gary Neville is, is still at Old Trafford waiting to hear <laughs> the result of right back tonight. Uh, with the other options, Wes Brown, who was a Champions League winner as well. Gary's, of course, got the, the appearances up there. Uh, Valencia, Raphael and Paul Parker, one of your original Manchester United team. Yeah, Parks was a, really, Parks was a brilliant uh, uh, defender. Um, even as a centre half, probably wouldn't have been great in terms of possession. We talk about the modern fullbacks, but obviously Wes was a really good player, good a good character again, and played centre half. Obviously Dennis Irwin can play a right back, but I, do you know what? I give, I give Nev a lot of stick, but I'm gonna I go with Nev. No, Nev. Listen, Nev, Nev was a, uh, a very very good player, and you know a really good teammate. So um, I, I'll go with Nav. You know when those young players come through, so you are already established, you've, you've won the sort of title, you've won the double in 94, and then those players start to sort of come in. What, what was the feeling sort of around the team about how good these players were? Do you know what, Jimmy? When, obviously, when you're training with the first team, every now and again, a couple of young lads come over and train with you, mm. and then they disappear, you mightn't see them again. But as soon as they came over, was it the five or six lads, you just knew they were here to stay when they first started joining the training. That was... That was the proof in itself. You looked at them and you went, they're here to stay. And because they were all obviously really good players, uh, really good lads. They come from good backgrounds. They, had a good, they, they worked their socks off. They were obviously talented. Uh, they had a good upbringing at United, obviously through the academy or whatever, and with the U team. And when they came into the first team, you went, oh, they, they're not going back. They're here to stay, which they did. You know the famous game, that I think the first game of the season, and, and you know the famous quote, you don't win anything with yeah. the kids. So you used obviously... As I said, you'd won a lot then. Did you have a fear that we're going to have to sort of wait a couple of years to get back to that level? You know, and that was... No, I don't think that would have been in the mindset, Jamie. I don't, I don't think so. We just thought these young lads... But again, I think Gary always makes the point, but there were some really good senior players around. Yeah. That's where we go back to this current United group. If you've got five or six decent senior pros who've already obviously won a few trophies, and when these young lads are coming through, and obviously you're still going to buy the odd player, 
you think you, you, you feel you're always in, in with a chance of winning trophies. There's no guarantees in life, of course, but you just felt, even after that setback, of course, Aston Villa, it's one game, it's early in the season, but you, you're still looking around the dressing room going, I think we'll be OK, you know, I think we'll stay up. You know, we, <laughs> we, you know we've got a chance and we do obviously a very good manager and you just, as I said, you just knew these young lads, I say young lads as if I was really old, they, they were going to have very good careers. Just one more on Gary. We can praise him in his absence. We, we hear a lot uh, about the character of Gary and the determination, but what about the quality? Brilliant. Gary was a brilliant player. And we, but Gary, again, again if Gary was a brilliant character in a sense when he came into the group and he came into the first team squad. Gary, I think Gary used to go to bed like a half a set every evening and he'd be going to bed with his bowl of cereal and we'd be, we'd be criticising him. But he was a really top professional player and his family from a good background. Phil was a brilliant fella. And when lads come into the group and he obviously proper loved the club, and that came true. We, we all embraced Gary. Gary was a decent, a different. Obviously, you need different characters in your dressing room, but Gary fell into the group, no problem. And we all liked him. We all had a bit of time for him. Obviously, that's changed over was the years. Was he the same character in the dressing room <laughs> that he is now? <laughs> well, in, in fairness, again, Gary was. When you first get the first team, you're going to be quiet. But Gary became more vocal as he, as he got a bit older and a bit braver. Um, there's no stopping him now. <laughs> but Gary was a, an excellent player, a really good pro, really looked after himself and went on to win, obviously done very well obviously with United and of course with England. You know, you, you have to have quality to do what Gary did. Do you have a Gary Neville scarf? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I don't. That was Not the first yet. tonight, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. All right, left back. Um, I have a feeling this is a bit easier for you. Yeah, listen, I... There's, out of all the players I've huge time for and respect for, obviously, a fellow Cockman. But very good players on there. Mikel was a very good player, obviously. Um, I'd love when Patrice, uh, Patrice came in, Shazy, but Dennis Irwin, every day of the week. I obviously room with Dennis with United, with Ireland. Um, obviously, he could play right back, he's right footed, but I put him in at left back. Brilliant trainer, very rarely <coughs> injured, turned up for all the big matches, good at set pieces. If he was playing now, talk about a modern fullback. Dennis would be up there with the best. Brilliant character, some, some good cracks together on, on some tours. Um, and Dennis was good, Dennis was a good fella. You're flying through this, it's not as difficult as you thought. Let's get to centre-backs where it, maybe it starts to get yeah, a little bit more yeah. challenging <coughs> for you. It's uh, a long list, <coughs> grab some water, Jamie. Um, <laughs> Rio Ferdinand, yeah. 455 appearances. Palliser and Bruce, both over 400 as well. Vidic, Jonsson. Yep, Stan. Excellent, yeah. This was this was probably the hardest one, I have to say, because obviously Rio, excellent. Uh, Brucey, good character. Uh, but I'd, I, I, I couldn't leave Yap Stam out. I just couldn't <coughs> leave Yap to okay the games. He wouldn't have managed the other lads, but Yap was big, strong, brave, brilliant 1v1s. Um, so I couldn't leave Yap out. The other one was an issue, but I went with... Um, I've gone with... Um, Gary Pallister. <laughs> no, I'm going with Pally. No, I'm going with Pally. Who, who, who was the, who, what was the sort of debate, the Pallister or who? Uh, I'd probably say Rio. Rio was obviously a good athlete and um, read the game well. Um, but um, I just said probably my, my relationship with Pally was pretty good as well. I thought, you know, sometimes it's your relationship with certain players. And when I first went to United, uh, same, there were certain lads went out of their way to help you and show, show you the... You know, the nightlife scene sometimes. <laughs> and, and, and Sharpie and people like that helped me and Pally was always on the scene as well. And uh, Pally obviously was a very good player, of course. That's why he's in the, he's in the team. Big and strong, always looked, he always looked tired, always looked exhausted. But um, no, I love him in there. I thought, really good player. I mean, I'm intrigued because this is the position I play, but what, what made sort of Yap Stam be sort of almost the number one of that group where he, he was first in? But for you look for... Um, did he have any real weaknesses, Jamie? You know, he was he could head it, he could leap, he could read the game, he was strong, he was aggressive, he was a decent lad. Um, I got on really well with him. Um, what was you feeling when he left? Um, I suppose disappointment, but, but as you know, when a player surprised? leaves... Um, how, no, how I'm not surprised. I think there was worries from the manager. I think when he came back, yep, I think he had a bad injury. There was a lot of that talk. And, um, but, and when you're at a big club, players do kind of come and go pretty quickly. Sometimes you go, it happened to myself. You're there one day and gone. And it was a case, he's gone. Let's, unfortunately, you, you, you try and move on. But yep, was obviously a brilliant player for Man United.
Team shaping up nicely. It's got a really solid back four and goalkeeper. This is how it is so far, Roy. And we move. Uh, it's Steve Bruce. I feel sorry for, incidentally. <laughs> this uh, we... is Bruce. Bruce, he was a brilliant <laughs> player. Hey, brilliant player. And again, a brilliant character to have in your dressing room, of course. But you have to leave somebody. I'll be ask me again in a few weeks. I'll be rotating the squad. Yeah. Obviously, Dick can come in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have a look at the midfielders. Again, a really big pool for you to choose from, Roy. We put them all in together. Um, yeah. So we so let's let's start with the central midfielders and and presumably you're going to rule yourself out. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm certainly not going to pick myself. Uh, Brian Robson has to go in there. Obviously, Brian was a great player for Man United, full of courage, scored some big goals for the club when Man United were obviously weren't at their best. And who's going to play alongside? I'm going to put um, Nicky Butt. Had some brilliant days with Butty, even obviously Scalzi. This one obviously is up for debate. But I'm next to Robbo. Uh, I'm going to put. Um, Paul Ince. Why? I like I am because Ince was a, again another very very good player. It maybe tarnished his United reputation. Of course, he ended up playing at Liverpool or whatever. And and Ince, um, when he was at United, it was all talk about Ince being the governor and, and and people kind of held that against him. But that was just that was just that was just banter. That was just there was, there was no nastiness with that. Ince was a really good teammate and I thought a very very good player. Tough leaving scores out of course and Butty, brilliant players and brilliant characters just as important. But I thought NC, when I first went to Man United, they just won the league. I think the first year I went there, I think we won the double. NC was brilliant midfield. And Rob was coming towards the end, so I was kind of getting a taste of it. And NC was a good teammate to have next year in terms of the trenches. Again, he could head it, he could defend, he get you a goal. Strong. And do you know what? I enjoyed his company. I, I, I think he's, he's one of those players who doesn't get spoken enough. Enough, Paul Ince. Because you, you think of when we talk about great midfield, you go, we all talk about Roy and, and sort of Vieira, and then we go to sort of Gerard, Lampard, Scholes, different types of players. But Paul Ince, when you think at the start of the Premier League sort of era, really, you know, when Manchester United were being successful, he was unbelievable, wasn't he? You yeah, know, I think he, he, And when he came to Liverpool, he certainly didn't produce maybe what he did at Manchester United, getting a little bit older, but it's, he could do everything. I mean, both feet, he could score goals, he was good in the air, he was quick. For a sentiment, you get across the ground as well. But I think a... if people held against Incy, maybe his personality taught. Again, I go back to that governor when that was his mm. nickname, and it was just. But that was just. He was far from that. He was a brilliant fella. That was just a bit of crack in the dressing room. Good lad. As I said, the players you look around when you're going to big matches, we always used to remind ourselves you've got a fella next year. Are you happy with him in the trenches next year? And you'd have Incy all day long, as you would with Scalzi and Butty. They're the two I thought. And I'll probably see them in the next few weeks, and you know I'll, I'll face the music then. But um, I just, I just, I'm going to go with Insane. How did it work with you and Paul in, together in terms of midfield? So when you mentioned sort of skulls on the key, but I, I felt obviously the older you got, you can be, become more the holding player, and maybe skulls would go for. Was it different it's when just, you first I don't, got I the team? It was just chemistry, Jimmy. I don't think I think it was chemistry. I think again when I got to the club. Me and Ince, obviously, Man United, most times we played 4 4 2. You'd obviously one striker dropping in, but generally two in midfield. And the way we used to do it, and that's the same with Butty and same with Scholes, whoever I was playing with, if one went forward, the other one would just sit in. Mm. And whoever was going forward usually did have a goal in them, like you said, Ince, or if I went forward. So you just take your turns. It was just just to get a bit of chemistry. It wasn't anything we walked on the training pitch. And the same when I went with Scholes, or if I went with, when I was with Butty, or even Veron, it's just that bit of common sense. If someone's getting forward or they're getting that opportunity, I'll just cover for you, no problem. You know when you join the club, we're talking about that role with Paul Ince, but obviously Brian Robson was still still at the club. And I watched the documentary on him uh, a few weeks back and, and the esteem he's held in mm. at Manchester United. Could, could you sort of yeah, feel I knew that, that presence when of you course. first went as soon as obviously I played, I played against Rob a few times when I was at Forest. So going there, when I was even growing up, the two midfielders I really admired as a kid growing up was Glenn Hoddle and Brian Robson. For different reasons, Glenn Hoddle for his brilliant skill and I followed Spurs. But Brian Robson, for what he'd done, and I thought he was just... I, I, the word I'd always think of Rob, I think he'd, great courage, great courage. In terms of getting in the box, picking up a lot of injuries, but dead brave. Brave. And I, so what, but ironically, then when I went to Man United, I remember like yesterday meeting Rob for the first time, and I shook his hand, and it was one of them, and I, I'm literally we're staring at each other. And he, the, the nature of the game, like I've said earlier, is I'm shaking his hand, but he knows I'm after his position. Mm. And we're looking and we're going, yeah, but that's the game. And that's what you want at your club, competition, going, you're after my position. And Robbo stayed on another year or two, but of course he was picking up injuries. He was probably 33, 34 then. 
And that's the machine of Man United. A great player like Brian Robson's gone up, but I'm thinking, I've got to try and replace him and, and do my best. What was he like to play against? You mentioned you did that a few times. Yeah, Urabo. Mm. Yeah, very, very difficult because he was tenacious, he was brave, but again, the great thing for me, when you, well, I think what I learned more in my career is when I was playing against brilliant players, against Ronnie Whelan or Brian Robson, these players, Gaza, I think I'm learning when I'm playing against them because of their movement and when they were making runs or when they were dropping deep or whatever it was, or when I was watching them on the television, conversations, I had great conversations with Brian Robson, just sometimes <laughs> it was over a few pints and he'd be telling me about my game or I'd have to change. Because when I went to Man United, my game was probably a bit like when I was at Forest. I would just get forward and get on the end of things and try and get a goal. But he had a conversation with Robbo one. He said, look, Roy, if you want to you become a really top midfielder, you do have to get more involved in the build-up, which I was probably... I didn't have the confidence to do that. But he said, it's something you have to learn. And towards the end of my career, that was probably one of my strengths. And that was part of the game I really enjoyed. And that was getting it off the back four and dictating play or whatever it might be or... Um, but that was something just from a conversation I thought to myself if, if, I, if I'm not going to listen to Brian Robson I might as well get out of the game so it's snippets of information you get from great players It's a good midfield isn't it Brian Robson and Paul Ince who's going to play in the wide areas then you've got two to pick you mentioned Lee Sharp before Yeah Sharp brilliant yeah uh, Sharp is a brilliant player really brilliant player at Man United particularly in his younger days where he came in from Torquay hit the ground run and went down for England Um Ended up, I think, the manager got fed up with Sharpie a little bit, maybe for his lifestyle. But Sharpie was a big help to me when I went to Man United <laughs> on and off the pitch. He was a brilliant fella, great company. Um, but Sharpie misses out because I've, I've, I, you can't pick a Man United team and leave Giggsy out. So Giggsy goes in on the left-hand side. Um, 25 trophies, 13 Premier yeah, League titles. Brilliant. Giggsy, and it, I think we, we hear, when I hear managers talking about players being consistent, then Giggsy has to go in. And on the right side, I have to go with, I have to go with Bex. I thought Bex was obviously a brilliant player. Again, and, and Giggsy and Bex in the dressing room, brilliant characters. You can't speak highly enough of them. They were consistent. How, the key. How, how did you sort of uh, dovetail with David Beckham, whose birthday is today? Apparently, in terms of the, the personality, was he different to to what we saw? Yeah, on the you outside? could tell that because Bex was a bit younger. He was a bit. Listen, he was from London. He loved his gear. He loved his cars, but. What you'd, what you'd always look for in any player who comes into the first team, particularly young players, they'll have, they'll have hobbies, they'll have things they like. But the key for me is when I was watching a young player and I'd watch him closely and Beck's been one of them going, are they, are they training properly? Are they giving everything for the cause in terms of their training uh, on a match day? And Beck's done that. So I didn't, I didn't care what Beck's was doing. Good luck to him. If, that, if I thought the cars and whatever else was doing was becoming a distraction, then you'd pull a young player and you go, listen... Remember what your priority is, but I don't think I once ever fell out with Bex about anything because I just thought he turned up every day and put a shift in. Same for Gixie. And I'm, again, these were young lads going out and enjoying themselves. They weren't going home every night, you know, and they're just and, and going to bed like never happy state. These lads were enjoying themselves, but they had the balance right. Yeah, go out and enjoy yourself. But when we train, we train, and when we turn up for a, a game at Man United, you give everything you have. Simple think, as that. Do you think sort of the wheel that David Beckham went into, and some people say it elevated him to, he was seen as one of the best players in the world and, and he'd get criticism for that and saying he's not that. But mm. I actually think the flip side of that, I almost think, you know, the style and the, and the lifestyle and whatever, you'd almost forget how good he was. I mean, what I take, Yeah, I take that? no notice of that, Jamie, but as he got a bit older and obviously when he got married and there was a brand there and all this, but I just go back to the David Beckham that I played with and worked with and that was a player who, f who worked hard every day and gave, gave everything for the cause. That's it. Mm. That's, that's it for me. There was no... Well, what about his skill set that was so particular to think? Well, where, where would you want to start? He, he, he could get an assist. He could get you a goal. He was brilliant in set pieces. He could run all day for you. Get up and down that line. Well, well he had to with Nev behind him. So he'd, <laughs> he, he'd everything you want in a wide player. When balls are coming in from Giggsy, Bex was getting in there. On the other side, where Bex was putting in, Giggsy was getting in there. The amount of goals they got from each other's crosses because they had a desire, they had a walk rate. And when they won trophies, which they did, they moved on very quickly. I never felt, I never felt ever with even Giggsy, and obviously Giggsy was in the team before me, that you felt they were distracted by the off-the-field stuff. Giggsy at the time was, you know, off-the-field. Giggsy had a lot of commitments and was a superstar in a sense. But his priority was his football, and that's why they were great teammates to have. Some people have, have talked about David Beckham being better suited in midfield. We saw it a few t uh, centre midfield. We saw it a few times with England playing that sort of playmaker role yeah. at times. Yeah, but was that crossing ability that was so unique 
was that the, why he had to play wide and better suited to play Possibly wide? Possibly so, and obviously he wasn't good enough to get in the middle of the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was the best option for him. And obviously he wasn't in the, in the madness of midfield where you needed a bit of aggression sometimes in, I suppose, the, the days we played, whereas Bex was suited just to be on that right-hand side where if he'd gone wide, I'd listen, sometimes the old-fashioned, he'd be inside right. And he'd football intelligence, he knew when to go wide. And we talk about being smart. He knew he didn't have to beat a man to cross the ball. Just give him half a yard and he just had to... It's like we see Trent at Liverpool. Mm. He just had that technique where defenders didn't know what to do with him. And if they got too tight, then he, he, could do, he could do him a little bit. Or to be fair, Nev was always giving him an option. But when you're in a good team, the beauty is when you do get the ball, even when I had it, midfield, good teams give you options, whether it be a striker, a full-back, a winger, someone stretching, someone coming short. That's what you want in a good team. We built the back four. We built the midfield. Uh, we've got... Quality on the wings, we've got a bit of everything in the middle of the park, haven't we? So we just need someone to finish these chances off that this mm. team is creating, or indeed be the focal point, Roy. Yeah. That's up to you because you're, you're not spoilt for choice here either. No, there was a... Oh, listen, the lads I'm leaving out, particularly, I, I, I go straight into it. Yorkie was brilliant, Teddy, good spell. Cantona was brilliant, Rude, Mark Hughes, Ollie. Oh my goodness! Hey, no, I am upsetting a few here, and I'm up upsetting myself. I, um, but I have to go. You'd have to go. Ronaldo has to go in the team and and Wayne for what they achieved in the game. I thought obviously two. I only played with Wayne and Ronaldo for a year or two, of course, but you could just see the potential in them and what they went on to achieve, and all the other brilliant lads I played with, brilliant characters. But I think I, I couldn't leave them. I couldn't leave one of them out. I don't think. I mean, they, they were sorry, Dave. They were obviously superstar teenagers. Certainly Wayne on the back of his move. Obviously Ronaldo. I think played against you in a pre-season friendly, and then you just brought him on the back of that. I mean, your role as a senior player. I mean, how tough did you have to be on them as young players, no. sort of in training, or was it always there? No, it was easy, honestly. And then obviously there was a few other senior players, and what we'd have to try. As I said, you, you, you see these young lads coming through, and. As long as they're giving it their all, it doesn't mean to say they can't make mistakes. You know, Wayne's made plenty of mistakes, but that's, that's part of learning, that's part of growing up. I made loads of Forrest and I had people like Stuart Pearce trying to help me out when I went to Man United. And you learn about your lifestyle and what's good and what's bad. But these lads, again, I think their priority, I think Wayne and Ronaldo go back to Bexley. I always, felt, I always felt their priority was football. OK, you can have other interests and do whatever you want, of course. But I felt their priority at all times was their football at Man United. And that was it. And if they were making one or two mistakes, you'd try and help them. You wouldn't be lecturing them like you're their dad or something. You're there to help and say, listen, we've done that before. You know, you've got to learn from it. But sometimes players have to make their own mistakes. They're not going to learn from my mistakes. But Jim, it's just, we certainly wouldn't be coming down hard and saying, lads, you know, you need to be having, you know, cut yourself on. You know, just focus I mean, on your football. I mean, what, what Ronaldo's become is obviously a phenomenon. Is that, is that the right way? No. What is he? What is, what is he? <laughs> phenomenal. He is phenomenal, yeah. yes. <laughs> He's become one of the greatest players of all time. He's up there with the name. So, I mean, the big surprise for me with Ronaldo was when he first came into United, it was sort of the step overs, doing great things down the wing. To become the goal scorer he's become, I, I find it sort of It's amazing, yeah. It's yeah. amazing. For, for his first two or three at United, like any young player, I think he came to United at 17. I like 17, he's still a kid. But you could just see the potential in him, the work rate, the desire. Now, could he, did we all think he'd go on and achieve what he did in terms of the goals, the assists? Um, and that comes down to that end product that we see, we see a lot of young players, you go, yeah, they've got something, but will they produce? Will they get to that end part where they can put the ball in the back, back of the end or get an assist or win the big trophies? And Ronaldo went on to do that and a lot more. Did we all say in the Man United dressing room at 17, that's where he was going to go? No. But did we all think he's got a chance of being one of the greatest players ever? We thought, yeah. But a lot can happen. Injuries and distractions. But once again, we looked at the Ronaldo for all his off-the-field stuff. I don't think I ever felt at any stage at United was he getting distracted by all of that. But it's 20 years since you first saw him in the flesh. Mm. Do you remember it even now? Well, we played a pre-season game, yeah. Obviously, we what came was back. your impression? Well, I, I thought he was very lucky. He was up against John O'Shea. He made John O'Shea look very, very bad, let me tell you. <laughs> but with Shea's, to be fair, we always made, we were jet-lagged. We just come back from American pre-season. But Ronaldo was excellent. And the message he sent, because the deal was done, but I think they gave him the option to stay on loan at Lisbon. And what I liked about him straight away, he said, no, I want to go to Man United straight away and have an impact. Of course, he had to learn, obviously, in terms of end product. And he was going down very, very easily, which he can still do, I suppose. That's just a trade, but he's not perfect. But no, and we all, again, we all, we all talked to him. 
you know, you don't have a book personality to come into your dressing room. We all liked him. It does help. If you come into a dressing room, you're, he had that innocence. But we thought, this kid loves the game. He wants to get better. You're at the right club. We'll help you. But the bottom line is, it'll come down to yourself. And he's, he's been amazing. And I love, still love watching Tell him. Tell us about the, the Wayne Rooney that came into your dressing room again. It just well, a, Wayne, a was a bit, like, well, yeah, Wayne was a bit different. And Wayne had obviously played a lot of games. At, he'd been at Everton. He was chirpier. He was a scouser. He was, I wouldn't say I talked to him as quickly as right now. <laughs> You're still waiting <laughs> but, to. <laughs> <laughs> but but you, still, you just knew he was going to be a brilliant player. He'd obviously put his marker down already, whereas Ronaldo came a bit unknown. But Ronaldo, obviously Rooney had played in the, the, the Premier League, played at Everton. Seen him with England, and we thought, yeah, welcome to the party. I had one or two disagreements with him, but that's, Over but that's good. Control. Yeah, Is that under the remote? Yeah, he took the remote control. He wanted to watch the X Factor. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot, you know, X Factor. <laughs> and I was watching the rugby league, so it upset me. But I think you need that. I think that's good. I really think when you have teammates, I'm sitting there and everyone's great, but there was disagreements, there was arguments. There was a, you know, I mentioned Gary Pallister. I had a fight with Gary Pallister one night in Marbella somewhere, but it was four o'clock in the morning. It was no big deal. <laughs> but it's good because it lets off a bit of steam. <laughs> Jamie, you know, when you're in a dressing room with full of lads, sometimes you need a bit of a, a bit of an argument. I thought, I felt certain that you would pick Ruud van Nistelrooy. Yeah, I Ruud. You talk about yeah. him a lot. And I thought you might go for Cantona as well. Yeah, Cantona, brilliant lad. But I just thought when, what they would want to achieve, I think it'd be hard. But Eric... Brilliant player for Man United. Again, I was, you know, I'm upset to leave Eric out. Again, a brilliant character. I keep coming back to the character and Eric producing the big games. And Rude is one of probably very few strikers I played with. Every, I've said it before. When Rude was true on goal, I would just goal. I wouldn't even just knew it was a goal. I'd even turn around. Brilliant finisher. And was it was he unfortunate, Roy, that he was probably at United at a time. Maybe I think it was maybe maybe Arsenal was sort of the, he didn't sort of win enough for how good he was, Roy Van Nistelrooy, in terms of the goals he got. Yeah, His possibly so. Yeah, because I, I, I know Nev was. I think Nev has been quite critical. Nev, Nev probably didn't rate him as highly as I did. But again, I go back to when you're playing with certain strikers, and I know you want to win trophies, but he was just brilliant at putting the ball in the back of the net. And sometimes when we didn't win stuff, that wasn't known to Roy. That was known to the rest of us. You know, I think if you're a striker mm. and you're scoring 25, 30 goals, what more can you do? OK, people might say, hold a play or run the channels. But if you're working with a striker, I'd rather work with a striker who gets you 24 goals, 25 goals than a striker who's good at holding it up and gets you five. Mm. You know, you putting the ball in the back of that. I've always said it's the hardest part of the game. And again, I, I got on really well. Rude was a good character. Um, but again, ended disappointment for, for Rude at United. Let's have a look at the final team then, Roy, and see if you're, you're happy with how it looks. Yeah, I'm OK with that. <coughs> Win titles, that team? Yeah, no, I think, well, put it this way, you've got a chance, and that's all you want. You've got, you've got players turning up, you've got goals in the team, you've got characters, you've got a bit of height, physicality, pace. We'd obviously play with a high line. <laughs> <laughs> we play between the lines. <laughs> brilliant. All on paper, of You'd course. You'd be the manager. <laughs> Uh, big Ron Atkinson. I've never done that. But I, I am, I'm still upset. I'll be driving back to Manchester and I'm upset with the lads I've left. Though, That's so when the text messages will start coming well, through. <laughs> Why did you not pick me? Yeah, please, everybody. Roy, well done.